Hey everyone, this is Nathan Williams with BlackRain79.com and today I want to talk to you about the top five keys to success for new poker players. And this certainly applies to people who've been playing for a little while, but you know, perhaps you're not seeing the results that you would hope for so far. Uh, these are five things that I certainly wish that somebody had told me before I started playing. It would have saved me a lot of time and probably money as well. So with that said, let's get right into it. So point number one uh, is to play tight. 20% uh, of your hands in six max and 15% in full ring. Um, this is a point that's pretty intuitively obvious to most people. Um, there's a reason, one of the main reasons that, that bad players lose is because they play too many hands. Uh, the obvious counter to that is just to play better hands than them. So this is a super straightforward point. So let's move on to number two there, which is to play aggressively. Uh, this means uh, in practice that you should be raising or re-raising nearly every single time you play a hand pre-flop. Uh, you should never be limping, and yes, I did just say never. Um, and calling should be uh, extremely rare, let's put it that way. I mean, there's going to be a time here or there, perhaps you get a small pair like pocket fours or something. Somebody's raised it up, it's, it's going to be okay to set mine in a spot like that from time to time. But the overwhelming majority of the time that you play a hand pre-flop, you should be raising or re-raising with it. Uh, after the flop, this means, I mean, you should be in control, of course. If you just uh, follow what I just said, you should be in control most of the time after the flop. Um, and you should be making a C bet uh, the large majority of the time. Um, I put here 75% of the time. It's sort of a rough average. Obviously, if there's multiple opponents in the pot, you know, you need to tone it down a little bit because, you know, there's a better chance that somebody has something. And against one person, it could be as, as high as 85% or even 100% against uh, some of these players at the micros who just fold way too much. Um, on the turn in the river, it's really dependent on, uh, number one, the player you're up against, uh, your cards in the board. Uh, but I would say that in general with the micros, uh, the, these these are streets where you generally want to be betting for value. You don't want to be try to bl trying to bluff uh, a lot of the bad players at these limits because one of the things they like to do most at the micros is call. So bluffing them, you know, is a good way to uh, burn through money. So uh, the point here to uh, to get though is that uh, pre-flop and on the flop, you should be playing very very aggressively. Uh, Ninety percent of hands are going to end on one of these two streets, anyways. Uh, so always be uh, be playing aggressive on on those two streets. So we go into point number three, which is to play in position. Um, this is another one that takes people, most people, a long time to truly understand uh, the value, the importance of position in poker. Um, you should be playing most of your hands from late position, and this means the cutoff and the button. Now, why you might ask is because um, your win rate is going to be the highest by far from those two two positions. So it only makes sense to play the most hands from them. Uh, everybody actually loses in the blinds. Some people, that's a little bit uh, shocking to them. But yes, you are going to lose in the blinds. Um, and from the first few seats, I mean, uh, most people have a have a, a very marginal win rate at best. So. Obviously, you don't want to fold everything from those spots. I mean, you're going to play all your good hands, of course, but all your speculative hands, you know, your suited connectors, uh, you know, your, your sort of low-end broadways, your suited aces, uh, your one-gappers, all that stuff, that stuff should be played in position, cutoff button, not from the blinds and not from uh, uh, early position. So let's move on to point number four there, which is arguably the most important point on this list, which is to play with bad players. Um, Guys, this is the whole reason we play the game. Um, the whole reason that we're able to win in this game is because somebody is at the table who's worse than us. Uh, if there's not somebody at the table, if, if there's not a person at the table who's worse than you, then technically you are the fish. You shouldn't. You should be asking yourself why are you playing in that game. So what does this mean in practice? I generally look for people who are playing at least 40% of their hands. I always want to have somebody like that at my table. And I'm going to target the crap out of them. Uh, mostly in position, of course, as we just talked about. So uh, let's move on to point number five here, which is also extremely important, which is do not tilt. Uh, you need to understand that poker is a long-term game. Okay, You've got to stop concerning yourself with individual sessions and sometimes individual weeks or even months. Um, sometimes it's just not going to be your day, week, or month. Um, big time winning players in this game focus on months, years, hundreds of thousands of hands, and even millions of hands in some cases. Need to understand that there is no quick fix in this game. 
um, and that day-to-day -day results essentially mean nothing. Now, I guess I actually lied here because I have a point number six right here. This one had to be on the list, which is proper bankroll management. Now, I say here 20 buy-ins bare minimum, uh, but I would actually double that in today's games. Um, the reason why is because 20 buy-in downswings are not unheard of at the micros, and if you only have a 20 buy-in downs uh, bankroll, obviously say goodbye to your entire bankroll. So I would actually say 40 buy-ins bare minimum for uh, for most uh, definitely the upper end of the micro stakes uh, in today's games. Uh, and what does that mean? That means a hundred big blinds, a full buy-in. Um, if you don't have that much, uh, you shouldn't be playing in the game. And I actually lied again because I have point number seven here, but this had to be on the list, and that is to have fun. This is the whole reason why we started playing this game. You know, perhaps you saw it on TV, you saw it at a friend's house, and it just looked cool, exciting, and something you wanted to try out. You know, that's always that should always be the number one reason you play this game is because you have a passion for it, you you consider it fun to play. Um, the second that this game starts to feel like a job to you, it's monotonous, uh, it's highly stressful, you know, that's when you want to take a step back and you want to, you know, just ask yourself, you know, why are you playing this game? If you truly have a deep passion and, and a love for the game. Because I'll tell you that that is the one thing that's going to take you further in the game than anything else on this list. So, with that said, guys, uh, I, I hope that these top five are actually top Top seven uh, tips were, were helpful for you guys. I want to thank you for visiting blackrain79.com and I will see you guys in the next video.